want to welcome you in worship today. We're so glad that you could join us this morning. And we pray that the Spirit of God would touch your hearts, your minds, and your spirits in a new and a fresh way this morning. Welcome to worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand and join me with a call to worship. Give thanks to God with all your hearts. We will all come back from our God. Sing full throated praises to our God. We will join in the chorus of thanksgiving for God's abiding love. Glorify God and that word which we know as Jesus Christ. We will worship our God with wonder and joy. Continue to stand as we sing together, My Hope is Built.
time for our children's moments. And we have two of our fabulous kids here. Denise and Sibel. <laughs> Hi guys, good morning. good morning. How you doing? Good. Good? We're going to talk about um, feeding this morning and God's provision. So, do you know the story about um, the feeding of the 5,000? It is no? Sabelle, you know the story? Yeah. You want to tell it? Four fish, two loaves of bread, five people. Five thousand people, right, exactly. Eat the potato bread. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>
Gracious and eternal God, we do indeed give you thanks and praise for the gift of your word. We give you thanks and praise for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, and the grace that you pour out into our hearts each day. Lord, hide me behind the cross. Decrease me, O God, and increase you within me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. When I was about seven or eight years old, I remember watching a lot of music videos. And I watched a lot of VH1. And they had Michael Jackson and David Bowie and U2 and the Pointer Sisters, you name it. Yes, I'm a child of the 80s. So any of those people that I named, if y'all know what I'm talking about, just raise your hand. There were a lot of celebrity responses and fundraising to address poverty and hunger in the U.S. and in Ethiopia in the 80s. The celebrity fundraising response to hunger and poverty in the U.S. was called Hands Across America. Who remembers that campaign? I stared at the television and watched thousands of people link hands to form an unbroken chain of Hands Across America, literally. And apparently, enough people participated in Hands Across America that if an average of all the participants was taken and that number stood together, there would be enough to spread across 48 states. Hands Across America raised $34 million, of which only $15 million was given after paying for operating costs. Some of the biggest names in music got together in the 80s also and recorded a song called We Are the World. Who remembers that? And it was to raise money for starving children and the famine in Ethiopia, a country in eastern Africa. The song raised $60 million to aid other African countries done so since 1985. $15 million. $60 million. Those are huge amounts of money. But the money runs out, which is why more has to be raised, because there are millions of hungry and poor people in our world, now probably more than ever. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, an estimated 842 million people suffer from chronic hunger. That's a huge number, isn't it? How do we even begin to tackle feeding this amount of hungry people? The disciples were likely wondering the same thing in our scripture lesson for today, and we continue our sermon series back to basics, looking at the feeding of the 5,000 in Luke 9. Crowds kept following Jesus and the disciples to Bethsaida, and Jesus welcomed them and he preached about the kingdom of God, and he healed people as they needed it. And as the day was coming to an end, the disciples tell Jesus, send the crowd away so that they may go into surrounding villages and countrysides to get lodging and to get provisions, for we are here in a deserted place. The disciples' words to Jesus sounded like they were tapping out and quitting, not just for the day, but on the hungry people that were there. It sounded like the disciples were using the fact that they were in a deserted place as an excuse not to feed the crowd. And Jesus doesn't accept their excuse because Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Jesus' words seem like a test of sorts. You see, at the beginning of Luke 9, Jesus had commissioned the twelve and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases and sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. And they did just that. Luke 9, 6 tells us they departed and went through the villages bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. And now, with all the power and authority Jesus gave them to heal and to drive out demons and to cure diseases, and now they tell Jesus to send the hungry crowd away to feed themselves because the disciples are in a deserted place? Jesus is not having it. He says, you give them something to eat. The disciples' response is to tell Jesus about their lack and their doubt, saying, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. As followers of Jesus, our response is often like the disciples. We have no more than this. Unless you want us to go and buy more for all these people, God, we can't. 
can't do it. And yet Jesus keeps saying, you give them something to eat. We often have the disciples' response to missions God is asking us to serve in, needs God is asking us to meet, leadership and the ministry of others God is asking us to support. We all know what our responses sound like. They sound like excuses. And the excuses sound like this. Our church doesn't have anything to attract people. And even if we did, it wouldn't be good enough for people. And Jesus keeps saying, you give them something to eat. Our church doesn't have enough money to do ministry. And even if we had the money, it wouldn't be enough to do anything great. And Jesus keeps saying, you give them something to eat. Jesus, I don't want to support that person's leadership because I don't like the way they talk or what they believe or how they hold me accountable. And yet Jesus keeps saying, you keep serving me and give the people something to eat. Yeah, but Jesus, you don't understand. It's hard and uncomfortable to serve people in your name in this time. I'm tired and I want this chaos everywhere to settle down. And yet Jesus keeps saying, you Give them something to eat. Somebody said, feed them. Who said that? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, Jesus, but you don't understand. I don't have enough education or knowledge to serve you. And even if I had all that, it would not be enough to lead anyone to you. And yet Jesus keeps saying, you give them something to eat. Friends, Jesus knows our excuses and knows our fears and knows our doubts and knows our inabilities and knows our hardship. And Jesus still wants us to feed others and love others and encourage others and give others grace in his name. A few years ago when Hurricane Florence hit the Carolinas, there was a, a restaurant in Havelock, North Carolina called La Casa del Patron. And they had only been in the community for about three years before the hurricane hit. And yet, they fed over 2,000 people in the community who could not evacuate. And they cooked and fed the people by only a cell phone light. Church, in this time, I know it seems like God is calling us to serve and feed others with less resources. Less ministry programming, less energy, less people to serve, and less money. But this morning, I challenge us to consider that this is exactly where God wants us. The blessing in today's scripture actually came from the disciples' own admission of their lack. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish. And Jesus worked with the little faith and resources they had, however incomplete and small, in the words of Sibel, Jesus worked it out. The next thing that Jesus said to them is make the people sit down in groups of about 50 each. And with only five loaves and two fish and about 5,000 men, not including women and children, Jesus was present in the situation and expecting God to show up and provide because this is exactly who God is. When we give Jesus what we have and we're honest with him about what we lack, God and Christ helps us give people something to eat, whatever they stand in need of, whether it's food or encouragement or grace or love or peace or joy or hope. God helps us give it. Jesus took the five loaves and he gave thanks and he divided it and gave it to the crowd and nothing was wasted. From this great feeding, we find God's a gracious and abundant provision in three lessons. The first lesson, church, is that God expects us to feed and help those in need, whether we are in an abundant place or a deserted place. When the disciples gave Jesus the reason why they could not feed the people, Jesus challenged them, saying, you give them something to eat. The deserted place that they were in did not stop Jesus from feeding people. And because of this, all ate and were filled. And there was food left over. The second lesson is that God expects us to trust and obey Jesus amid our uncertainty and doubt. 
Jesus told the disciples to make the people sit down, and the scriptures tell us that they did just that. It says they did so and made them all sit down. And Jesus did the rest, giving thanks to God, blessing and dividing the available resources, and giving it to the disciples to feed the people. The third lesson is that God makes the impossible possible. And it's not just in this story, but it's a thread that runs throughout all of Scripture because that's exactly who God is. God specializes in showing divine love and divine grace and divine might and divine strength and divine provision through the most impossible situations using the unlikeliest people. God specializes in doing more with less. This is who God is. So I have some questions for us to reflect on this week. The first question is, do we expect Jesus to work miracles in deserted places and at times of lack and hardship? And if we don't expect God to work, why not? The second question is, are we willing to trust and obey God in deserted places? Are we willing to trust and obey God when our lives are not that abundant, when there are seasons of lack, when there are seasons of sickness and disease, when there are seasons of uncomfortability? Are we willing to trust and obey God? And the third question is, how is God challenging us to give another something to eat? Whatever that may be, whether it's food, or love, or grace, or encouragement, or a word of hope? How is God challenging us to give another something to eat? Pastor Nicole uh, called me Thursday. Um, we talk nearly every day in my testing room. And so she called me on Thursday night because this past Thursday was our PB&J sandwich packing and pickup. And she shared how one person, one, from the Northfield community, they had shared making and packing PB&J sandwiches on their Facebook page. And they just shared it. And what that did was it sparked others to reach out to Pastor Nicole and ask, ask her to include them in the next mission for next time. One post produce more servants for next month's mission. Church, we never need fear of being in a deserted place. We never need fear of lack or not having enough or our own uncertainty or doubt about, about what Jesus can do through us or what Jesus can do in a season. For Jesus is always with us, saying, you give them something to eat, and I am with you, working through you, as you do. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are the source from, what, from which flows every resource and provision that we need. Help us to remember, oh God, whether it's seasons of abundance or lack, that you are in the midst. Challenging us to give people something to eat. And that you equip us by your grace to do just that. Help us to remember that you are with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, as always, if the word or worship have blessed you in any way, um, you may give online at www.goodshepherdumc.com or you may give your offering at the front at the altar or in the offering plate um, on the table as you can. Um, I have one uh, amazing uh, giving moment to share. Um, I think the text came, I think the next day from Shelly. Um, she had picked up all the sandwiches and she took a picture of the sandwiches in the back of her car. And right below the picture was 492 sandwiches that had been made and packed and collected to be sent to the Atlantic City Press Commission. It's amazing. So, we do thank you.
we give thanks and praise to God, not just for our families in our church, but our families in our community who see one post, who hear about what's happening and how we're serving the community, and who want to join in that effort. Again, if the, um, if the word or our mission or ministry can bless you in any way, we invite you to give generously today, either online or in the place at the front or at the back. Let us stand and join together in our closing song, Come Thou Fountain, Every Blessing.